okay so god had me reading the book of ezra today and he kind of put it on my heart earlier this morning through a sister in christ that i've been spending some time with and um he has a message for you you will know if this is for you but i still encourage you to take it to him for confirmation as you should do with every word that you are hoping or looking or thinking of receiving okay so he's talking about insurmountable favor and when god says he is giving you insurmountable favor he means favor that is too great to overcome overwhelming favor favor that you could never actually anticipate or expect or imagine because it is that great i'm going to give you the word that he gave me talking about this insurmountable favor first and then i'm going to give you the scripture that he used to support this okay so he said people have or will come up against what god has instructed you to build but God is going to raise up destiny helpers, people who will sow into the vision that God has given you. These people will have the eyes to see God's hand over your life, and they will help support you as you carry out your God-ordained instructions and tasks. These things that God has put on your heart to do, to implement, to start, to build okay these things are your passion these things are um your natural god-given talents and gifts things that have been on your heart for some time and you might not have realized these were things that you were supposed to be doing before stepping into your relationship with christ but through your relationship with him it just deepened and the desire to do these things got stronger and now he's giving you ideas and he's giving you strategies to implement these things so these people these destiny helpers that god has specifically set apart for you he has ordained for them to sow into you and what he's planted in you to be birthed in his perfect timing they are going to support that vision they are going to encourage the ideas that god has given you Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. God's word is sustaining. And this verse is specifically refers to food. Why? Because food is what Jesus was tempted with first. Why is that the case? Why was he tempted there first? Because enticement follows emptiness. I'm going to say that again. Enticement follows emptiness. You will always be tempted where you are empty. If you're lacking intimacy, you're going to be tempted with lust. If you're lacking financially, you're going to be tempted with financial dishonesty. If you're lacking emotionally, you're going to be tempted with toxic relationships. If you're lacking spiritually, you're going to be tempted with false idols. You will always be tempted where you are the most empty. It doesn't mean you will only be tempted when you are empty, but the place where you are weak is where your adversary is coming for you. If you want to learn how to handle it like Jesus did, click plus. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait. Hey, 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 So this is me about two years ago, 18 years old. I was living on my own, had my own crib, smoking every day, just throwing parties, drinking. Just got over a breakup too, so I'm smoking more and chasing females to like try to fill that hole in my heart. And over a course of events, God started to open my eyes up to see the route that I was going down and how much darkness I was living in. So the first thing that happened was I got a phone call from my homie. And he told me that uh, my homie that I grew up with passed away. He got uh, killed in a home invasion. They killed him with an axe, stabbed him in the chest and in the back. And then the next few, uh, two days later, I get another phone call saying my other homie died. And he uh, overdosed and died in his sleep. And he just had a kid too. And so I'm just like, I like open my eyes up to see a little bit how short life was. You can be here one moment and gone the next. And then um, I just smoke more, you know, try to take take the pain away, but it don't ever help. And then uh, the next thing that happened, like two months later, it, it changed my life forever. So I'm working at Walmart and uh, coming back for lunch, there's just two teenagers and they come in and they try to sell some electronics. And so they're running out the store because my manager chasing them. And when they came in, when they uh, when they parked in the parking lot, they came in a U-Haul truck and they hit this family's car. And so the family's out there waiting for them to come back. And then 
the two teenagers, they're panicking, so they're running out the store. The dad approaches them as they've got to get in a U-Haul truck, and then one of the teenagers pushes them over, and literally, they both get in a U-Haul truck and run them over, right in front of his family, too. His mom was there, his uh, his wife, and the two kids, and so they run them over, but they, they're dragging his body across the parking lot, and I ain't gonna go in how graphic it is, but just seeing the look on the two kids' faces, man, it's just like, it's traumatizing for real, and just, and, and seeing how you can be here one moment gone the next and they went christmas shopping ended up losing their life well dude ended up losing his life and then the two teenagers 15 18 years old tried to steal some electronics ended up catching a murder charge now they're in jail probably 25 of life you know it shows how you do evil more evil comes upon you and so after seeing this it, it, it changed like my whole perspective of life and i wanted to change like, I, I didn't want to live like this no more i didn't want to live in darkness no more but i didn't know how to change though and so the first thing I knew, I had to start smoking. Cause I was smoking every day, all day. And so I'm trying to start smoking on my own, but I can't do it. I maybe go like a day without it, and then I go right back to it. And so I, I know I'm addicted, and I, I didn't know what to do. I was literally struggling so hard. And God approached me through two people. He sent two people to approach me in two different days in a row. So the first day, this one dude came up to me at Walmart, and he was telling me about God and just showing me how... um how short life is and how you're all going to be had to hold account for what we do when we die. And then the, the next day, hold on, I'm gonna make a part two. Anyway, listen, I've got to go because you're worrying me now. Fabulous. What a waste of time. Welcome back to Girlies for God, sponsored by season five of Succession. My name's Chelsea. And I'm Jesse Pat. <laughs> Jesse Pat, it's so good to see you. Like you said that, and then I was I thinking that already. Because we don't talk enough about what's happening. And given the season that I'm in, a season of seasons, it is just <laughs> so You're getting unreal. me like kind of worked, like emotionally worked oh, up. God, just I'm I feel so sorry. <laughs> We've said so much already. Let's take a breather. We'll be right back we'll be right to back. Girlies for God, sponsored okay, by Sprite. Our... Okay. Yeah. Live, laugh, and loving so <laughs> much, right? Okay, I was yesterday I was listening to Good Good Father. Your good good father. Harmonize. Saw know. him raise his hand, his ever so masculine palm to the sky when he was singing Jaira, and I, I, I felt the Lord say, That's that's your husband. And <laughs> no, no, but it's not funny. At the end of the day, is it? It's serious. We could. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Uh, what do you believe in? Christian. That's cute. I used to be Christian. I'm. I'm sorry to hear that. What happened? Well, first I hashtag deconstructed, which led me to hashtag exvangelical. But what exactly does that mean to you, though? Like, do you still believe in Jesus and his sacrifice? I'm not sure anymore. The church is just so toxic. Well, th that is certainly true. I agree with you. But just like how there's sick people in a hospital, it's so cliche, but it's true. There are sinners in the church, but Jesus is not toxic. I've just experienced a lot of pain music from religious people. I am so sorry. And you should know the Bible actually illustrates and bears witness to the fact that the rulers of the church from ancient Israel to Rome have always been some of the most wicked people on earth. But when rejecting toxic behavior in the church, be careful not to reject Jesus and the Holy Bible. 